Hey yo, do you know how fast time flies? It's almost a year now since the walk snail showed us the Avatar digital FPV system. I finally got one, so it's time for a review. If you want to know the conclusion, you might want to stick until the end of the video, because I'm gonna say something that's brave, yet controversial. Some of you really might want to hear it, but you have to stick until the end. To keep things clear, yes, Kadik Woxney provided to me with the hardware. No, this is not a sponsored review. I was not paid to say anything and the Woxney have not seen this video before it went public. Today's video will be about the Woxney Gogors VRX and VTX as a system. Let's keep that in mind. And when I say the Woxney Avatar, I mean both the goggles and the avatar receiver with analog goggles attached and the vtx i was using is the avatar hd pro okay so what's the deal with the walk snail avatar let's begin what's good about it i made a list and you know what the list is kinda longish first of all it's super beginner friendly everything works with everything you only have to ensure that you updated your avatar hardware to the latest firmware and done no messing with activation different firmware versions for different types of devices no 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 we are not doing that kind of the crap over here you just flash latest firmware bind the goggles or the receiver with the vtx and everything works out of the box there is even a live stream of me doing assembly binding and firmware updates and there you can see how surprised and uh, actually kind of happy I was because of the fact that I never had any problems while setting everything up. Even the MSP display port OSD just worked out of the box. Then the 25 megabit mode looks really, really Nice. I hate the 25 megabit mode with the DJI. However, with the walk snail, it looks much better than what DJI compares. At one point, I even gave up or using the walk snail on the 50 megabit mode. Yes, it looks slightly better, but 25 megabit mode is surprisingly good. Yes, I know it's subjective. Maybe it's only me. Maybe I'm partially blind, but for me, 25 megabits was enough. Great, fantastic, outstanding. 25 megabit just looks great. Then there is the MSP OSD and the fact that the walk snail looked above beta flight and that means that you have a lot of fonts a lot of characters msp osd works out of the box with beta flight with inav with ardu pilot you do not really have to worry too much there are no missing characters everything is great then there are the one s vtx's which are extremely important for everyone who likes to fly with small whoops if you are a whoop pilot then one as VTX absolutely makes sense. Another great thing is something that I wish the DJI did, but they didn't. It's the external VRX that you can attach to your old analog goggles with the HDMI cable. Although I'm not personally the biggest fan of having this VRX on your analog goggles connected with cables left and right, but this is a great option for everyone who do not want to spend 600-700 dollars on the new goggles. Yeah, sure, the goggles are much more compact and offer the better handling experience, but it's also more expensive and, well, unfortunately have no analog input. But with this combo, you can do whatever you want. And finally, on the good side of the things, the Cadix slash Woxnail company seems to listen to community. Yeah, sure, first versions were kinda crap, but they improved improved, then they improved again, and now in April 2023 I think it's safe to say that the walk snail avatar is just a good digital FPV system and what's most important they solve majority of the problems they had at the start. You know progress. I love and appreciate when the company that sells you something actually kinda take care of the quality and the expectations of the users. 
not unlike some other. This video was created thanks to my Patreons and YouTube channel members. You're the main reason this channel keeps going. If you're not one of them, then please consider becoming one for as little as two bucks a month. And yes, there are special benefits that you will receive by doing so. Thank you very much. Highly appreciated. The Woxnail avatar is not perfect and there are a few, well... I don't want to say problems, but let's challenges. The problem number one is the general quality and longevity of the hardware. Like, let's take a look at this VTX. It has internal flash, but it has no USB connector. To get to the files, to the videos stored over here, you have to use this small cable and plug this plug into this port. You know what? During the first attempt to do so, I damaged the port. I have not applied too much of the pressure. I was really careful to correctly orient the plug while plugging in, but yet, still, the port was damaged. And it's also slightly bigger than the Cadix Vista, which was a surprise for me when I wanted to install this thing in one of the quads that I'm already using with the Cadix Vista. But, well, yeah, okay. Next, this thing overheats. And this thing overheats a lot. Only after a few minutes after sitting on the desk, this thing really gets toasty and the goggles display the message that the VTX is overheating. It is. Absolutely. It burns when you touch it. So be careful with that. There also should be a VTX with the SD card slot. Using internal flash in the VTX to record your flies Seems like a good idea, but well, it really isn't. It's so much more convenient to just take the SD card, put it into your PC, download the files and then install it again that, well, yeah, do it. Please, the next generation of the VTXs should have to have, no, not should, have to have the SD card slot. It would solve so many issues. And speaking of the SD cards, whoever decided that this is a good, not the best, even the good place to have the SD card slot in the goggles should stop designing FPV goggles forever, immediately. Yes, we know, Fat Shark was doing that. But one more time, this was the worst, one of the worst features of the Fat Shark goggles. This is just not a good place to have the SD card slot in the goggles. Period. But at least there is a power switch, so that's something. And then there is something that's hard to measure and thus every time anybody talks about the penetration of the wax nile where... <sighs> Because we are not measuring, we are only giving our opinions. And my opinion is that, well, yes, for me, I feel that the penetration of the Wax Nile is inferior comparing to the DJI. In every case that I had those kind of the problems, there were no gradual signal quality degradation. It was like perfect image and then just no image at all. If we compare this to the DJI FPV system when there is a visible gradual signal degradation, this indeed might give us the opinion that well the penetration is worst. On the other hand, the penetration really depends only on the frequency and if both are using 5.8 GHz frequency then yeah, the penetration is really the same. On the other hand, we have to compare with the same antennas, with the same VTX transmitter, power and so on and so on and so on. But like I said, this is something subjective. We are not really measuring the penetration. And yeah, if you want to fly bandos or in the forest, hmm, you'd better increase the VTX power and be careful where you are flying. And finally, a teeny tiny problem. Well, there is no 4K recording on the VTX. I wish the VTX could record in 4K, but it cannot and we just 
just have to live with that. And now it's time for a brave yet controversial part. I think that currently the Woxnail Avatar is the best digital FPV system for the beginners. For all those pilots who would like to begin their adventure with the digital FPV. V. And here it is why. Very simple to set up and use. Everything works out of the box. Great image quality even on the 25 megabits. And the entry price is much lower comparing to the DJI. If you have the analog goggles with the HDMI input, you can just get yourself the Woxnail Avatar video receiver and connect one with the other. And that's like four to five hundred dollars saved. Yes. You do have to have the analog FPV goggles with the HDMI input, but let's be honest, quite a lot of us have those already. And that's the real selling point for the Woxnail Avatar. Here's the next video you should watch. In the meantime, I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and like always, happy flying!